everyone, welcome back to the Big Red Zone. We are very excited for today's show. Today's show is all about Cam the Man. Coming to New England, the Patriots signed Cam Newton to one-year contract, vet minimum with incentives. Uh, we'll also talk about Patriots getting that terrible uh, punishment for the Cincinnati Bengals thing that happened. We'll do the people's topic. All that and more on this week's episode of the Big Red Zone. Welcome to the podcast. It's Big Red Zone. I'm your host, Big Red. As always, I'm joined by my good friend James. Hey, hey. And producer John's over there. Yo. And uh, big week for to be a New England Patriots fan. Uh, I'm sure you didn't hear, but Cam Newton signed, or is signing, it's not official, signing a one-year deal with the Patriots. So we'll get into that. Talk about, get our reactions from the, uh, initial reactions from the group here. Um, then also the same day, Patriots got a punishment for the ludicrous uh, taping. That's not yeah. even a scandal. It's not even the Patriots team, it's but a, yeah, they they were accused of recording the Cincinnati Bengals, and they got a fine. So we'll talk about a little bit about that and all that and more on this episode. But thanks for coming. Thanks for joining yeah. again. Um, so starting right on it. Guys, first initial reactions. What do we think? Cam Newton to the Patriots. We happy? We sad? Indifferent? I mean, it makes sense. <clears throat> I mean, because here's the thing. You don't have really much tape or much proof of Stidham. Even though I appreciate that a lot of players are really positive about him. You know, I know Julian Edelman particularly was really positive about Stidham and said, you know, he shows a lot of potential. It was almost going to kind of be a similar thing to like a Brady moment where you got some guy that, you know, kind of unproven, not a lot of data on, not exactly a first string. And his chance to you know, go out there and prove it. But I understand the move because uh, there's a lot more data. There's a, there's a lot more data on the side of Cam Newton. And really, he has a lot more experience. He has yeah. a lot more success. And granted, his last couple of seasons weren't great. Right. They weren't great. But also, he wasn't, he wasn't really with as good of an organization as the Patriots, vice versa. It was hard to do well where he was, I feel. But well, that's just me. Um, to, to answer uh, to the initial question, I am... I am excited yeah. about it. It brings some fresh, uh, fresh like feel. It like boosts some energy into oh, yeah. the into the Patriots like Patriots Nation. I had Danny Football the night it was announced. Five minutes after it was announced, called me and we talked about it. It was that like people are that yeah. excited about it. Um, shout out Danny Football. Now people are saying is can and I've said on the show if Cam Newton is signed by the New England Patriots he is going to be your starter because oh, yeah. he's just better than Stidham as far but as we know as far as, far as, as we data, know yeah. from judging what we've seen he's an MVP former MVP and he's had, he, like you said he hasn't had the best cu- last couple of years he's been banged up since his MVP year he's just been beat from defensive like been able to take shots on him quite like Gronk you get people defensive players get away with a lot more hitting Gronk yeah. than other players. So he is banged up. He is, uh, you know, kind of entering that elder year. But I saw something interesting. People keep saying his age. Cam is the same age as Tom Brady was when he came back from his ACL tear. Yeah. So it's not like it's on. Now Tom Brady's in his own world. He's his own um, yeah, level. But it still shows it's possible. Right. So... I like it. Worst, this is the worst case scenario. St- like, either A, Cam performs what we think. He's a starter and he's going to help yeah. you get to the playoffs further than probably Stidham. And if Stidham beats Cam out for the job, yeah. then that just should ensure your confidence in Stidham being your quarterback. Oh, yeah. It's something to consider, too. The Panthers did not necessarily have a great O-line to protect him. And with the Patriots, however, I would argue they're going to have a much better O-line to protect him and possibly give him a chance to do a lot better. Hopefully. so. There's a lot well, of question marks on that th- th- O-line. There's a lot of flux, I'm aware, but typically with how the Patriots operate, they invest much more in their O-line than right. Panthers. But so. I'm nervous about the Patriots O-line going into this year. Yeah, well. Because A, they lost Dante Scarnecchia, who is one yeah. of the most pivotal people in that organization. That's tough. Um, we, t- we want to talk about injuries. Uh, David Andrews, that's yeah. the biggest question. He's, had, he's coming off of clots, blood clots. Yeah. So the doctors cleared him. They didn't sign anyone to be a backup. They drafted a six-round kid. So obviously Belichick and the Patriots are confident in him to play. Doctors are right. giving the okay. 
But who knows about him? Isaiah Wynn, we know his struggles. Joe Tooney is great, but is going to be rumored to be traded until he signs that big extension with the Patriots. Yeah. So, like, I'm very unsure about the O-line right now. Yeah, but I'd argue even... I would argue that with the way the Patriots play, even if they have to get some rookies in there, it'll still be at least as good at, at the level, if not better, than what Carolina was giving them. I so. will say, too, Carolina... Like, when they went to the Super Bowl, Cam did carry that offense really oh, 100%. well. But don't forget, the last few years Cam was there, he had, the, I think, the best running back in football, which is Christian McCaffrey. Yeah. yeah. He's a dual threat. He, them, yeah. he, was, uh, he can run the ball. He can catch the ball. And with, when you have Cam as, like, a option-type quarterback who's big, fast, oh, yeah. he can easily, like, pitch it to – Christian McCaffrey, it's like that was a tough tandem. Yeah. And Ron Rivera was a good coach. Oh, yeah. So I think that he was in not the best situation, but when you check off the boxes, like look at compare, I like obviously coach, you got to go with Bill Belichick, but Ron Rivera is a good coach. Yeah. O line, I need to do more research on the O line. But when you look at like star power, the last yeah. few years, he had Christian McCaffrey and not great, yeah. but DJ Moore is a decent wide yeah. receiver. He had enough to get it done. Yeah, he had, some good, but, he had some good pieces. But point being, I'm excited. I think it's the best deal for Cam not to go back into our Kaepernick discussion, but yeah. he did exactly what I said was a great call. He took yeah. little money with all incentives, yeah. a chance to start, but not sure yeah. if he's... He's taking the job saying, I'm yeah. going to compete for the and job. And I like this prove-it deal that they have, where, hey, if right. you want to do this, you're going to have to get out there and prove it. And I think that's the way you should do with right. this kind of situation, where you have a quarterback that's coming off of either an injury or you've been out not playing for a while. Right. It makes all the sense, especially when you're already pretty confident in Stidham anyway. Right. So... Yeah, I agree with you. This is that's the best situation that he's going to make so much money if he does well this year. Well, especially if they re-sign him. If, if he does well and he does everything they're hoping for and more, uh, I'm going to call money right now. Him. They're not re-signing Cam Newton. What? Write it down. Next year they're not re-signing Cam Newton. Were they going to draft somebody? I think they either because next year, let's say, I mean, this is going way down the line, but my reasoning yeah. for this is next year. Let's say, let's go with option one, which I hope happens for Cam, for the Patriots, forever. Yeah. He has a great season. Okay, yeah, he has a great you. season, much like Tannehill, mm -hmm. where he goes out and earns that huge contract. Yeah, Patriots aren't going to pay him that money. It's proven they don't pay their sorry unless True. he takes a pay cut, which I don't think he would because he's taking a big one this year. Yeah. He's going to want to go out and he's going to have a lot of suitors asking him, hey, you want to come start oh, yeah. for us? Because by next year, maybe they they have teams giving up on their quarterbacks. Maybe people are leaving. Like Deshaun Watson's a free agent. Maybe he leaves for a New England tight, oh. and, which I'm hoping. And now Houston is in the jam because they don't have a quarterback. Yeah. Maybe then they sign Cam Newton. You know what I mean? He's fast, yeah. kind of a runner, rusher, big guy. Anyways, so they would be willing to offer him big money. Yeah. Let's say the opposite happens. He has no. a bad year. Do we re-sign him? No. Or do we give Stidham a chance? Do we draft a new guy? Regardless, I think they're going to draft someone in the first yeah. round next year unless they you get a free, to. Aid, free Especially agent. Especially got some good talent coming up. Right. It's been, been a long time. When's, when was the last time the Patriots drafted a high I, draft quarterback? I don't think Belichick has ever drafted a I'm first talking round. About, we're talking like the 80s, I believe. Well, a high round, you could say Jimmy G. Jimmy G was a second round pick. pick. Yeah. So if you okay, want to so say Jim, yeah. Jimmy G was the highest quarterback taken. Yeah, we didn't keep him, but that's all. Right. But, but he was the highest one taken by Bill. Yeah. Now, I don't know. I think maybe maybe Bill maybe, does maybe draft be the time. High. Maybe be the time next year. Or maybe they get someone like Deshaun Watson. I would love that. You know what I'm saying? That. Which I would love that too. Big Deshaun Watson fan. That would be. I think he works so well in that system. He would. But but anyways, point being, if yeah. he does poorly, yeah, I don't think they resign him. I think they maybe they do, but I think they give the keys to Stidham and try to let him at least get a chance to do it. Maybe put him on the field somewhat this year, if he, you know what I mean. If hmm. they need him, Stidham. If, if Cam Cam's doing. like struggles, they're going to go to Stidham. Yeah. And who knows? Maybe it'll still be his chance to prove it. Right. You know? I, by, who, maybe it works in Stidham's favor because maybe he just gets to only go on the field when we need it. And even if he looks marginally okay, if Cam Newton is sucking, then he's going to look great. Well, I tweeted so. out 
I'm excited. I know I've talked to some of you, both of you guys about yeah. this. I'm so excited. I've never said this. I'm excited for the preseason because oh, yeah. I've never had, there's never been a situation like this where it's a big question mark. Who's going to start? Because honestly, yeah. you can say Cam Newton signed, he's starting. Everyone's saying that. But it's not guaranteed. No. Bill has done this before where he'll sign a bit like a big name guy. Yeah. And if you're not playing well, he will trade you away. He will yep. bench you. He'll cut you. He doesn't care. We talked about it last week. Um, yeah. So with um, to Garrett, like he doesn't care if you're an undrafted free agent and you do better. You're gonna, he's going to keep you. Oh, yeah. So I'm excited to see who's going to win the job. And like I said, it's a win-win. Either you get the Cam Newton that is going to perform well, yeah. or if Stidham beats him out, you just have a Stidham beating out a guy that you thought was going to start. Like you, that should give you yeah, even true, more true. confidence in Stidham. Fun fact about him, and I noticed this, uh, both Auburn products. Huh. Both from Auburn, both kind of in the same – they're both kind of the same prototype kind of player. Cam's yep. obviously bigger. Uh, but it's going to be interesting because now they can retool the offense around those type – those oh, yeah. guys kind of – coming into the 21st century, 21st century, so to speak, uh, quarterback, the current, oh, yeah. current age quarterback of rushing. So that was like a kind, of, kind of fun tidbit. They're both Auburn products. Fun. Was that fun. the thing you were waiting that to my, tell yeah, me? That was my, that was, I didn't know that. Yeah. Oh, I, I thought pretty it was, cool. I thought it was interesting. Yeah, it's that. interesting. I've heard that today. Where's Auburn? I don't know. <laughs> not around here. Auburn. That was down, like, down south somewhere. Auburn. Alabama? Probably. I think it's Alabama. Uh, of course, Auburn I get hiccups as soon as we start doing the episode. It's oh, awesome. Oh, dear. That's Auburn. great. Where is it? Auburn. But uh, I'm excited because uh, there's a lot of potential here for the Patriots to do well. Now, John, you're a big fan of this. You're a big Cam Newton guy. I like Cam. So um, you I'll, have to be excited about I, him. I like Cam. I, don't, I didn't know who. Like, I'm a, I'm a regular Patriots fan. Ironic that I'm on a sports podcast, but I'm like a regular sports regular sports fan in general, but just that also that comes to being a regular. Like I watch all the Patriots games every Sunday, but I don't know who the second string defensive guy, you know what I mean? Right. Um, so I didn't know who Jared Stidham was uh, b- before all this. So I don't know how Jared Stidham plays, but just knowing that now we have Cam Newton, like you said, and I've learned a lot about who he is, Jared Stidham, um, just from you guys. So with everything said, like I'm, I'm with you. I'm excited for the shootout that is a preseason. Like you were saying, we haven't had like an exciting preseason. Like you know what I mean? Like like a competition. Like oh, who's gonna be this guy? Who's right. gonna be this star? Exactly. Who's gonna be this star? Because for the most part, minus like some like who's gonna be the third str- like second string linebacker? Who's gonna be the who's yeah, gonna been who's gonna make the offensive line? It's usually <laughs> positions that like you kind of know what's gonna happen. It's kind of a couple things like oh, I hope this guy makes it. Um, did but, you see the video? Not interrupt you. Did you yeah. see the video Cam Newton put out? Yeah, I, saw I it. didn't watch it, but yeah, it was pretty, <laughs> it was pretty intense. And like, fr- like from like I said, I didn't watch, but I I know what it probably is. Um, I, I have a feeling like he just trained his butt off. Like I'll bet you, I fe- I have a feeling Cam's gonna be nice. I hope yeah. it lit a fire under him. Right, I, that's I, what I, I mean. Because like he he has oh. this whole thing to prove now. Right. So I think he's you know what I mean. Well, like I said, probably good odds right now. Like. When I say good odds, probably like not a lot of people bet it, taking bets on them. Oh, me, but man. if you're looking for a big red, uh, big red co- uh, take for betting uh, odds for MVP next year, two guys I would bet on, and I'm if I can bet, I'm gonna try to figure out how to put a bet down because I want to see it. MVP: Aaron Rodgers or Cam Newton? Because they are probably the two most motivated individuals in the league this year. And usually it goes to a quarterback. So I look at the quarterbacks mainly, but Cam Newton got cut by the team. He was drafted by, got shut down by 31 other teams and finally signed a vet minimum after being a few years removed from being an MVP and a super bowl in the super bowl. Um, and he's like, he's a star. He was a star in the league. You know what I mean? And Aaron Rodgers. To have your team draft in the first round of quarterback is insulting. Oh, did I didn't know they, that? Yeah, they drafted. Oh, yeah, their he's fighting for his job right now. So they drafted their his replacement in the first round. Wow. So not only did they not give him any help, like they didn't draft a wide receiver, they didn't draft. Uh, they drafted a running back. They the first two picks they made 
shout out to AJ Dillon because I love AJ Dillon, BC product. Uh, and he's a stud. But they drafted their first two rounds, a quarterback and a running back, two of which they have all pro guys. They have Aaron Rodgers and Jones as a running back, Aaron Jones. So they wasted their first two picks. So obviously building for the future. They have a new guy come in. It's all new people in. I think Brett Favre mentioned that, like when yep. you like, it's you get to a point sometimes in an organization where everyone that drafted you is gone, so yeah. now it's all new people. So you don't really know as well the people, and they're looking like like normal. A new company, like a new CEO comes into a company, they start bringing in all their own people. It's like it's typical. So Aaron Rodgers is playing for that next job. Cam Newton's playing for that next job. So. And they're motivated as all, all heck. <laughs> so I would have loved to have seen in like an alternate universe, Aaron Rodgers in a in a he's Patriots been jersey. Rumored. Like he may be. He like he like would we fit said really well. So sick. Like we said, could be the ne- next year's. Yeah, yeah, that'd be cool. Imagine if we just have this like like for the next couple of years. Now we just every single year we have like this former superstar. Like this year it's Cam Newton. Next year it's Aaron Rodgers. Year after that, it's Deshaun Watson. Sure, Deshaun get, um, Watson from Seattle. Uh, uh, Russell Ra- Wilson. If Russell Wilson. Wilson leaves Seattle. That's like I'll be shocked. It's like uh, Brady leaving the Patriots. It's like Brady. Oh my god! Whoa! <laughs> You're I'm just, right. Just saying. It's Call possible. it now. Start making it's the jerseys possible. now. Right. Um, if Aaron Rodgers came to the Patriots, I think it would be a multi-year deal. I don't think he'd sign a one. How old thing. is he now, though? He's in his thirties. Thirty. Mid. Thirty-four. Early, 35, yeah, 34? mid thirties. I don't know. It's good. He's got a Wrangler deal or something like that. I know that. Isn't that like Brett Favre? Jeans or Jeep? Uh, jeans. Oh, also no. Brett Favre. I think it's both of them. Both oh, of them. Really? Wow. They like them. QBs. He's 36. So, I mean, a long deal. That's getting close. I think they give him like a two, there. three year deal. I'm saying like more than a season. Oh, yeah. I don't know what he's in his contract right now, but um, I have a feeling they're going to get rid of him. I mean, depending on how the team shapes up, if he wants to win another Super Bowl, it's either this year with Green Bay or possibly with another team. And I don't know if he'll do it this year with Green Bay because I don't know. They were close to going to the... Uh, Yeah, but... They were close last year. Yeah, but it wasn't his fault they didn't make it. Right. So I think... And they've retooled a little bit on that team. So I think they're going to be fine. Um, But yeah, so Uh big red tip. Take the odds. bet, Bet on Aaron Rodgers and Cam Newton for potential MVP. Are we going to get into sports betting now? Like, just as a podcast? No. I think we can... I, I, I don't oh, mind. You would it. love it. Would <laughs> yeah, love you're like, I don't mind. It. I'll I let you have that thrown. I wouldn't um, mind mentioning it, talking a little bit about it. But. Would we like to, just going back to the Cam Newton thing, so we did make a post, I'm sure most of you saw it, it kind of got a little steam on it, our Instagram. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Would you guys like to react to some of the comments that the people sure, said sure. about the people. Cam Newton? Yeah, I'm curious. Um, Fanling Sports. We'll see. <laughs> Thank yeah, that yep. is not wrong. Um Yeah, I think it I, I mean I'm a little more excited. I'm a more like we'll see. Yeah, we'll, we'll get right. Like, he had an exclamation like, point. Yeah, okay. I'm a little excited. And then he said he said he said I'll judge after the first game. Which yeah. I don't know if he means preseason or I don't know what yeah, would, whatever. Yeah, we'll figure it out. Um I think he's assuming that I mean I don't want to assume anything, but I think he's assuming again, like most people, he's gonna be the starter. Mm-hmm. So maybe they're thinking like we'll see after pre- but I'm saying people Wait for the preseason because I think that's where it's going to come in. Mm-hmm. The one thing you can say is Brian Horry will not be the starting quarter. If he start, Brian <laughs> Horry is starting week one, I'll be shocked. We're screwed. If that's um, CJ Blake four again. These people aren't here to defend themselves, but he says puke emoji. Stidham is my QB. I mean, I hate to tell someone they're wrong. <laughs> but, they're both your QBs. But why can't they both? Newton is here but, to be the backup. That is all. He is a better option than Hoyer. Stidham is the starter. I stand by my statement. I'm sorry, but I think that I mean Stidham I, has potential, but as of now, no. He's not wrong. He's better than Hoyer. I right. Think we, I think I agree well, with that. Well, to be fair, we can grab people off the street that would be better than Hoyer. So. No, that's disrespectful yeah. to Hoyer. Hoyer is a is a good court, good backup quarterback. He's a good, and he can start game. Like he's a prototypical backup quarter. Like he's like a good veteran lead. Like I, I think he doesn't get as much credit, but still, way better than Hoyer. And could could Newton be the backup? Maybe, but I don't think Bill is bringing. I think Bill is just bringing in to make the competition better for yeah. the starting. Um, underscore Diet Rich thirteen says he says he's excited. 
and the knickknack design basically just says, uh, how are we so blessed to be in New England? Cam's always been a playmaker under Bill. Cam, Cam's always been a playmaker. Under Bill, it'll be exciting to watch. On paper, it automatically sure. makes us a huge contender again. Yeah. Just to shout out a little people in the, uh, yeah. in the BRZ universe. Yeah. Appreciate your comment. Feel free to keep commenting. I, we love the interaction with the fans and obviously with people's topic. But other than that, just every post, give us a comment. Um, overall, people seem excited. Yeah. A couple, couple doubters in there. But overall, yeah. I've seen all positive it's definitely majority Stuff, on that yeah. one. I think you're crazy to be negative about adding Cam Newton to your life. Like, even if he doesn't this. play, yeah, like, yeah. like even if he's just the backup, you have a veteran, you have yeah. an MVP yeah. guy, like a former MVP in your QB room. That's, like, not a bad and, thing to have. Like, it's not negative. I don't think this is a bad sign. No. Especially considering if Stidham got hurt, we were left with Hoyer. And then, then, literally, I, then literally Edelman would be the next quarterback. So oh, that's sick. Sick. they have a couple of rookies. Like they, they have. A, they but would have, they be better than Edel at that point? Yeah, I think they would. <laughs> I, 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 no, I don't know. But I don't know. But anyways, point, point. Be, at least, point being, at least if somebody gets injured, you still have another competent quarterback. Right, and I mean Cam is injury prone. We've seen that. So if oh, you, yeah. even if you go Cam, you may even he uh, hopefully God forbid because I want to see him succeed this year, but. Uh, <laughs> He's going to I I like I think it doesn't hurt to have more arms in the QB room. Just so just so we don't repeat something later, I'll just throw this out now. Um one of the people's topics we got, we're going to do people's topics later as usual. Um but a people's topic from AK May 96, he asks oh. who's starting, Cam or Stidham? Cam. And after all, I figured I'd just throw this out now. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's a good one. Uh a, a- May, pro golfer A May, yep. we'll be uh seeing him soon. Um I think first reaction, like gut reaction, what's going to happen, I'm going to stick with what I've said is, based on what I see, is it's going to be Cam. But yeah. I wouldn't be surprised if Stidham has a better camp, they'll go Stidham. I'm not, like, I, I wouldn't be shocked if Stidham's starting, but I, I tend to lean more on Cam Newton being your starter. We're all going to have to see about preseason. We're all going to have to see about practice. And the great thing about Bill Belichick, he doesn't care about basically any any sort of title you have beforehand it's all about who plays better with the team right odds are it's going to be cam newton right uh, it is is the genuine you know but stidham could be the one yeah john what what oh cam come cam, on yeah, super cam, cam. Yeah. let's go cam. let's go um so do you want to pivot on that well from well i have a question oh, Mark. Okay. i have one yep. more question i heard this interesting question i heard okay who plays more games this season cam newton or rob gronkowski you know why? What? What's your? I don't. Both, they're both equally accident prone. So. Because oh, a, you mean if he's going to get injured? Prone oh. and B, like maybe Gronk is rested games. They make because we talked yep. about that. They're going to rest him. Yep. Maybe Cam doesn't start every game. Like they maybe he starts off as a starter and then you know loses what? it, or maybe he earns it at the end. Hear me out. Tampa Bay is trying to do a championship run. That they're, they're, they're trying to win. Yeah, mm. I know. I know the Patriots are, but their chances of going to the Super Bowl are, are, I would say, less than Tampa Bay in terms of just look at the talent pool. So they're going to want to save Gronk when they need him. So I think that Cam will then play more games because you need, you almost need Cam and Stidham to be able to get at least to decent postseason, if not Super Bowl. Not, the, not that I think they're going to make it, but you think you get my point. Whereas Tampa Bay has a decent shot, and you're going to need Gronk in the Super Bowl, no matter which team you face. Therefore, I'd probably say, say uh, Cam Newton plays more games than Gronk. I agree with that. I'd probably say Cam too, um, but I totally disagree that they're they're going to be struggling to make postseason. The Patriots? Yeah. No, no I mean like totally late, late, late postseason. I think that's where they're going to go. I think they're going to... They're not going to Super Bowl. Don't don't you dare. I think they're exceeding expectations. We said... Didn't last week with Jagarid we did Super Bowl predictions? I said the Patriots. With Stidham. Because I thought it would be cool Stidham versus... Isn't Brady. that crazy now? Yeah. Last week... We didn't even know. We didn't know. But now I even think, like, still, this. I mean, Stidham would have been fun to see, but even Cam. Patriots fun. versus Bucks. Patriots, Bucks. Patriots, Bucks. See, you see no Cam, the non air, but the guy who just took over for Brady versus Brady. Cam wants redemption. Brady Make wants it. to prove he can do it. Right. I just keep going in for, like, a, it's like a hot, movie trailer. Hot takes. I think if I was yeah. the NFL, I'd want to force that. Um, yeah, I'd. 
definitely pay the refs and have yeah, a little. Yeah. <laughs> Let's get these guys in there, huh, <laughs> shall we? Let's make some money. Um, yeah, I definitely, I, I, I tend to agree with it'd the be like, camp. It'd be like The Rock versus Stone Cold at WrestleMania, wouldn't it be? <laughs> Imagine we brought that back. Be nuts. Oh, my God. It would be just blow the roof off the place. And The Rock is even more ripped now than what he was. Yeah. S- sub, like, not to get too off topic, but did you see The Undertaker retired for, like, the third time? His- Bro, I wish you didn't bring that up because I could go for, like, an hour. Yeah. But since you brought it up. Quick, 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 quick thoughts. Yeah. Well, so he game. did. Um, they did basically. WWE did their own version of the Last Dance documentary with the Undertaker, yeah. same like five part series yeah. or whatever. And then at the end, Undertaker was like, "I'm hanging." Like the cowboy rides away or whatever he said. So this was like, this one was like, for real. For real. Do you think he planned to come back after he retired the first time? I don't. I'm a wrestling guy, so I I trust see, you. Every single time he's retired, it's never been like as definitive as it is now. Because this one, he literally said like in the documentary, he's like, I have no desire to get back in the ring. Because his whole thing was he was hard on himself. Very much you could relate to like a Brady or someone like yeah. that. He was always like, he never wanted to go out because he, he had this legacy of the character, The Undertaker. So he always wanted to have his last match, like be as good as his first match. You know what I mean? So he was always hard on himself. That's why he kept coming back. But he finally had a, this last match at WrestleMania. Did he win? And uh, yeah, he won. He won. And it was like a, it was super. It was just like creative, like because they did. It was like a COVID thing, so like there weren't no fans. They did like a, I don't want to get into it, but they did like a a cinematic wrestling match. But it kind of helped with his yeah. character. But yeah, this it seems like I wouldn't be surprised. It's wrestling. I wouldn't be surprised if we see him in like five years or whatever. Um, I mean, how old is he? This guy's he he's getting up there. He's so, uh, wrestling for the rest of his life. No, but I just remember the first wrestling event I ever watched. <laughs> was what was it it was wrestlemania it was two or three years ago and it was undertaker versus roman reigns and i remember i came late oh he's 55 oh he's not that he looks like i thought he was like oh yeah he's yeah um i came late they do a thing where they all bet on john and his buddies do like bet bet, not bet but we like we like yeah this is what i think predictions predictions and i predicted all like they said you predict all these <laughs> and i literally got almost all you predicted of them most right. of them right yeah and without me seeing like i had no idea who any i was like ah oh, this name looks good this person. and then like if i saw like oh i recognize this name this person's gonna win and then the last one on the card was the undertaker i was like i yeah. know this guy i'm gonna go with the undertaker and john was balling i'm pretty much balling at the, i was uh, devastated that he retired and, and then he said and i was like I don't remember. Being, you were like laughing. You I were like remember. laughing, but you were like, he forgot his hat in the ring. And I was like, shut up. Because <laughs> it was supposed to be like this like symbolic, like, I left my hat in the ring. I passed the torch thing. Yeah. You're just like, <laughs> you came back and got it two days later at Mo- <laughs> Monday Night Raw. <laughs> but you're right. Like, that was the moment where we all thought, like, he like, was oh, done. he's like done. Like, and then, like, and then you're right. He came back like a year later. But this Not one even. seems like he came back on Monday. Didn't he come back on Monday? Oh, he might have. He, like he might have actually. I'm not sure. I, I don't remember. That happens in wrestling all the time, though. You yeah. think people retire, but they'll eventually come back. Like, look but at, they, they look retire at from being like, yeah. You know? But the thing is, they retire from being like a regular. Yeah. To like, we're going to pay you for one event kind of thing. That's what he's been doing that for a while. That's what John Cena does now. John yeah. Cena has a part time, or like, I think they call it like a legend contract now. Um, Where he comes just, back every so often. Yeah, like if there's like a big match or Is whatever. Is the Rock kind of like that too? I he must have some yeah some sort of legend movies. thing. I feel like yeah. John Cena and The Rock are much alike. John Cena and The Rock fought each other twice at WrestleMania. They did back to back. I think I saw one of them. We can like get off yeah, it, yeah, but like yeah. it's I know it's too much wrestling talk yeah, for yeah. probably most of the audience. Okay. But like this is my this is my so avenue. That's your baby. Yeah. So, but I'm glad you brought it up. Thank you. Yeah, no, <laughs> I, I had to bring it up. Um, where do you go from there? Cam Newton, huh? But uh, Are you saying Cam, Cam Newton is the undertaker of the NFL? He's coming back. He's coming back. And going to make... Choke win. slam Tom Brady. Yeah. <laughs> That's how to get kicked out of the NFL. So I guess we'll pivot a little bit into the other story, which yeah. I think you want to get into. Yeah. Um, Patriots, the same day that they signed um, Cam Newton, it came out that they got... A punishment handed down from the NFL from the um, I don't know if anyone remembers because it was so small. The Bengals, uh, they said that we recorded the Bengals. Um, their practice time or something. Yeah, like that, record or, or their yeah. sideline during yep. the game or something like that. And we got a one million dollar fine to the Patriots. Organize uh, the Patriots like craft organization. Like so craft, does that affect their cap? Or, 
Or is it I think just, it like just a generic, come, I don't like, think it's gross. on the cap, but I think it just comes out of their wallets. Okay, a million dollars pick. And a three third round pick next year. That's a problem. Now, here's what I this is my initial problems with it. First of all, it's the Bengals. No, can, no one's scared of the Bengals. No one was recording to watch <laughs> film on the Bengals illegally. We did not have to cheat to beat the Bengals. I want to say that one more up. time. We do not have to cheat to beat the Bengals. No. Okay? So, also, for all the people that are saying, well, they did. I don't know. They didn't have to, but they did. No, they didn't. It was Robert Kraft's org- like film documentary series, yeah. Do Your Job. That's they had, what it didn't was. Didn't they have permission to do that? They could have had permission, but it got screwed up with the, um, like with yeah. the place they were filming at. Yeah. Because um, it wasn't even at a game Bengal that stadium. they were at. Was, it was at the Bengal Stadium? Was that a different stadium? I think it was in Cleveland, if I remember correctly. Yes. And they got permission from one of the sides, but not the other. Yep. And then they had to give, like, they got, like, a huge font, whatever. Um, I To me, I don't think it had anything to do with the playing. And you can know because did Bill Belichick get suspended? No. From this? Did he get a fine? Bill Belichick no. get fined. So it wasn't if if it was related to team stuff, like team yeah. like going and breaking the rules to record, Bill Belichick would have been yeah. fined, suspended, all that kind of stuff, especially after the former yeah. Spygate. It w- yeah, exactly. It would have been him getting in trouble, not yeah. Kraft. Oh yeah. 100%. So you just took a third round pick. Because their TV crew yeah. screwed up and the guy That's maybe true. filmed the sideline. It raises the question, can you punish players and supporting staff for the things that people outside the organization do? Right. Genuine question. Can you hold them to that standard? Because the reality of it is, look, if they had told Robert Kraft, hey, you're going to lose some money on this deal. We can't allow people to do that. Even though they got permission from the people that own the stadium. Right. I can't remember. Yeah, but I think it was the stadium it was said the Brown, it was okay, yeah. but the, the stadium said it was okay. And the, and, the, it and the Bengals didn't. Which, to be fair, that's on the people that own the stadium. That's on the Browns in that right. case, where they have to work that out. But also, not for nothing, if it's their stadium, they get to make the calls. And I might right. disagree with a certain calls, but if they get to choose whether people get to film or not, whatever. Right. So if they said, "Yeah," why do the Bengals suddenly get to say, "You know what? Even though we don't own this place, even right. though we don't dictate the rules, we're going to tell you guys you can't do it." Even though they had permission, what that tells me is the NFL needs to understand what are your rules on this. Right. Do the teams have sole authority over who can film them at any time, anywhere, any place, whether it's their stadium or not? Is their presence their own essential kind of like safe spot, if you want to call it? Or is it up to whoever owns the stadium? Right. Because I'm assuming this has been a wishy-washy thing for 30 years, as the NFL does with many different things. They don't write down very clear rules. So, but the funny thing is that rule hasn't changed still. What I want to no, know, nothing's changed. About I think that. we talked about it back when this first story yeah. broke, back when during the season. But who died and gave the Bengals so much power? The yeah. Bengals security kicked the Patriots guys out of Cleveland's. Yep. Where's Cleveland's security? Cleveland's guy was like, "Yeah, they got permission." No, they didn't. We're kicking them out. Blah blah blah. No, you, you no. That's not their place. And hold on, if that's the game we're going to be playing. Yeah. That's kind of terrifying because what that means is, hey, you know, you could screw out a lot of teams out of picks. I'm willing to bet you money right now that there are teams that have been filming Patriots doing stuff and they have permission to do it. For and they filmed other teams. Yeah, for other documentaries. Every other team does documentaries and stuff, which I'm all for. I'm all about it. But when you arbitrarily pick to punish one team for something that everybody else has done, and I guess we're kind of looking at MLB here a little bit too, that's also looking at you guys. When you arbitrarily pick a certain group of people to punish, just because you dislike some of the things some of them have said, that's unfair to the people that are there simply to play the game. And they're doing their job that aren't causing a problem. They're being The poster childs are doing exactly what they're supposed to do. Especially when they have no relevance and no connection to what happened here. And you're setting an example for how you're going to yeah. handle it. So if, like now you know... If this happens, you better be losing a third round pick and a mi- see. I don't yeah, have you a set problem. The standard because right. now it has to be at least a third round, third round pick. What happens if it's worse? Right. What happens if it's something like that? They they go into the locker room. Maybe they record some of the plays or something. Some of the things people are planning. And then all of a sudden yeah, that gets really out. Bad. And then now it has to be a first round pick. Or is this going to be like an inquisition in the NFL where if you get any little bit anything wrong, even though it, show me show me the rule that was broken. 
there is no rule. Yeah. They never cited a rule. So it was just kind of, ah, the Bengals aren't okay with it. It's like, well, so? So here's my problem with the whole thing. I don't really have a problem with the fine, okay? Did they break a rule? Maybe. They filmed the sideline. Maybe the guy filmed the sideline for too long, and, like, that wasn't right. Okay, fine. But you find the corporation, Kraft Corporation, find Robert Kraft because he's in charge of it, fine. fine. Yeah. But you do not punish the team no. for something that the team didn't do in the exactly. organization, like the yeah. film corporation with the owner did. Yeah, exactly. It doesn't make sense. No. The film wasn't being used for the team. No. It obviously, because they did it, I forgot all about it, to be honest with you. It was like a six-month investigation on like a five-minute sideline video. It couldn't yeah. have been that much. Like it's. And what I find interesting is they're they're worried that they're taking footage from that. Yet that's footage that is easily obtainable from even people that also work at the stadium. Right. From their own team. You know, recording this case, the Browns in that case. It's not like they were recording anything that was secretive. Right. I it, I. It's nothing they couldn't have got off a no. broadcast. So it's like I, exactly. It's so not. It's if you're already crazy. broadcasting it, how could it be illegal for you to possess something that's going to be a broadcast anyway? How? That makes no sense. It's just, it just is another thing where the NFL handles badly for punishments and yeah. um, handing out. But if they're going to make rules, make them consistent for everybody. It's that yeah. simple. Right. Same thing with deflated the football thing, by the way. I still don't enforce that consistently, but that's a yeah. whole different thing. It's like every quarterback does it. It's like it's not. Yep. But anyways, we'll digress with that obviously yeah. not too happy about that but the news about cam newton coming to new england really oh, yeah, helped big. oh yeah really helped uh soften the blow with that yeah and i mean to be fair in the grand scheme of things hopefully it won't really affect the patriots that badly but yeah it's still annoying I'm to lose hoping, the third round but pick. the third round pick is big because that's a, like a decently yeah. high draft pick you know oh yeah so uh that brings us to our next topic uh, which is our last topic, the people's topic. I said topic like five times. The people's topic. So the people's topic, uh, as you all know, you can write in any questions, topics that you want us to talk about on the show. So without further ado, producer John, take it away. Let's hear him. So, uh, yeah, we, said, we said earlier, one of the people's topics, we kind of got out of the way. It made sense to keep it with the Cam Newton right, stuff. Right, um, right. Shout out AK May 96. Love you, AMA. Um, second people's topic, totally different topic, comes from Francisp underscore 23, Fran Kisp, something like that. Um, on Instagram, he asks, would Kyrie be this against the NBA bubble? If KD was healthy and they were in first place, they being the Brooklyn Nets. Yeah. Um. So, is a little background required to answer this question, or? Well, I, I just mean that I think what he means is KD's hurt and out, so they're yeah. not going to be playing. Um, well, give us the background about Kyrie Irving, like people not oh, playing geez. and stuff like that. So Kyrie Irving is arguing that he does. He's not. He already announced he's not going to go play. In, um, he's also coming off a little bit of an injury okay. uh, this past year, uh, but he said he's not going to be going to Orlando, making the trip to Orlando to play for the Nets when okay. they open up. Uh, he said it's not the right time with all the in, uh, the you know the social yeah. issues that are yeah. going on right now. Okay, coronavirus, you know, all that stuff is happening. He's like, I don't believe basketball is the right thing right now. So I believe what uh, what was the name? Sorry. The, the uh the France place. I'm sorry France. Francis underscore twenty three. So I believe what they're talking about is you didn't even use their name. Fran, Francis <laughs> Fran, Fran I I don't Francis I'm gonna call you Francis. All right, buddy. Uh, Francis is talking about is would he be saying that like he doesn't want to play if you know KD was healthy. The team was doing yeah. well because the team still has to win its way into the playoffs. They're like the ninth seed, I think, right now, and they'd have to make the eighth seed to make the playoffs. Okay. So they'd have to win that, you know, win their games that they play for their like yeah. six or whatever regular season games that they play. They got to win those games. So would he be saying that? And then even that, you have a chance to play the number one seed in the first yeah. round. So would he be saying that if they were in first place and they had a full strength team? I don't know. 
I don't venture to understand what Kyrie thinks. Kyrie's a very odd duck. He does a lot of things that I don't agree with. So I I don't know. He changes his tune at the drop of a hat. So oh. um, I don't really know. I do know that the Brooklyn Nets, uh, if they miss the playoffs when they come back, are going to get a lottery pick. If they don't make the playoffs, if they make the playoffs, then they lose their pick, first-round pick. Yeah. So I know from the organization standpoint, as much as they say they want to win, I guarantee they'd rather take a lottery pick over, which meaning uh, a top 15 pick in the draft, rather than... Um, losing in the first round of the playoffs and losing that first round pick. And we've seen the Brooklyn Nets have the most people sitting out, some for good reason, like most for good reason, like DeAndre Jordan just came out and said he tested positive for coronavirus. Obviously, you're not going to go play, right? Like, you're not going to go to the bubble and play. KD is coming off a really nasty injury last year, wasn't probably going to play anyway. I'm not surprised he's not playing either. Like, I don't think anyone expected KD to play. Kyrie... You know, that I I don't really know what goes through his head. He thinks the earth is flat still. So Does he's a flat earther? He's a flat what, earth who? Guy. I didn't know that. He's a flat earth guy. Wow. So isn't AJ Styles going back to the Undertaker to <laughs> discussion? There's a lot of the like athletes that are flat, flat earthers. Earth guys. So hmm. I don't know. This guy I it confuses me. I know if I'm the Brooklyn Nets organization, I'm playing for the Brooklyn Nets. If I know my organization more than likely doesn't want us to win, why am I going to risk my body? for a couple weeks to just lose and go home. So I kind of get it because, you know. It's all about how you frame something like that when you say it, though. Athlete, but if you look at it, like an athlete's body is like their yeah. That's business. their job. That's it's their, their business. Yeah. Like it's their, it's their organization in yeah. a smaller sense, like in a sense. Like they market themselves. If they get hurt, that screws up their worth, net worth. They're not going to be able to get a huge contract. They're not going to be able to make that extra money so if you're going to play two weeks which could risk you either getting sick hurt for nothing and your organization more than likely doesn't want you to win even though they say why are you going to risk your health for two weeks but i think it's all about like how you present that to people is the thing if you just say eh, i don't want to play and walk away but like if you give a good reason something like that where you're like it doesn't make sense by the way i would not be one of those people i would want to play like that's i'm just saying i can see it from their perspective that they like if my organization doesn't want to win why do i want to win kind of thing and i it's a bad mentality to have and that's why they're a losing franchise but i don't know i i the whole bubble thing is interesting like there's some people that have good reason not to go. Like we talked about DeAndre Jordan. I mentioned before the pod, um, we were talking about basketball before. Avery Bradley's not going because uh, his child has a respiratory problem, like mm-hmm. his history of respiratory problems. Totally understandable. Like that's like, I, I don't think there's any, and I, I hate that Laker fans are really getting on him about not wanting to yeah. go because this is his like family. This is his life. Like he doesn't want to get his kids sick, especially that are in the at risk category. So my feeling is if you don't feel safe, don't go. But I feel like uh, to answer his question, I I think Kyrie's just, I don't know. I, I don't know. I don't know where Kyrie's head's at. I don't know if he really cares about the coronavirus if that's like one of his so reasons. you don't think that's a motivating factor i don't think so it's motivating maybe, factor maybe he believes it like i could believe the social injustice stuff maybe yeah. he believes strongly about that because yeah, he is a, yeah. he is a so like he does like he's like a very he's vocal an influencer person. in that yes, area, yes yes activist activist yeah. type person so yeah. i i can see that but again i don't know if that's his like i'm sure that's part of it but i don't think that's all the the pie okay you know what i'm saying no, it makes sense. I'm with you. Also, in other news, J.R. Smith is signing, uh, supposed to sign with the oh. Lakers. That's big news. Okay. He's going to fill the Avery Bradley spot. And I don't know if you guys, actually, this is, I'll say this is my people's topic. <laughs> the uh, the Celtics have an open roster spot that they can sign someone to bring into the playoffs. Yeah. Is there anyone that you guys have in mind that you would like them to sign? It can be a... Uh, Out of who? I don't know. Anyone. Anyone like in the world? Agent. That's a free agent. Oh, I have no idea who are free. Yeah, agents, give us so. some, give us some like top uh, five or top ten like prospects here. 
to choose from. They could sign anyone that's on like a two-way contract. So like uh, Taco, Carson <laughs> Edwards, like those Taco, Taco, those guys. Taco. Are, that's my. That's you my pick. Taco. Uh, there's also Jamal Crawford. Okay. There's uh, It Isaiah Thomas. Ooh. There's uh, Demarcus Cousins. Cousins. There's oh, Jr. Yeah. Smith, but she's probably in the Lakers, but still a technically yeah. free agent. I mean, Taco. Uh, you want Taco? Taco or Isaiah? Yeah, I I would go with Isaiah as well. I like Isaiah because he's a good scorer and he kind of fits yeah. the mold. Like yeah. he's been here, he's you know, it's kind of like a it'd be like good for the fans. I want Demarcus Cousins. Cousins. I have I'm a, feeling a big you're fan go of Demarcus Cousins. You can get him cheap. Um, you could he's a he'll help on the defensive low post area, rebounding. He can shoot outside. He's a superstar, just coming off an injury. So if he's willing to play, which he's another guy that. He's kind of like in KD's position. He's coming off like an Achilles type injury. Yep. He may not want to risk getting hurt for two weeks. You know what I mean? And save himself for the next, get a big contract next, or a decent yeah. contract for the next season. So if that doesn't happen, I'd be fine with signing Isaiah or even to help with like low post taco would be not a bad ad. I like yeah. Jamal Crawford too. Jamal Crawford gets buckets off the bench. He would, he would oh, yeah. score. Taco just got named like. What the the D League like All Star team or something like, like that? Like really all, like D defensive D team. Or he had like he had like the most like defensive like blocks like or something. Def- all defensive. Yeah, team. something something around that. He, a lot of Celtics play like the rookies won like a lot of uh, like Trey Waters. I think he won, mm-hmm. and one of them won the MVP of the the league. Oh, wow. So the they have a nice like young class that probably will never get to play with the base unless something happens but that's like good pieces that they have that maybe are trade pieces or yeah. maybe can find their way into that mm-hmm. rotation somehow but my man jo- joaquin noah just got signed by the clippers did he yeah he's been out of the league for like a year i, was say, I didn't even know he was still playing um i love joaquin noah defensive i just remember him on the bulls with yeah. the, the bun prime yeah. prime joaquin noah um uh, but yeah, it'll be interesting. I, and, you know, for all we know, the Celtics could not sign anyone. Damn, yeah. he's done that before. So we'll see. We'll have to wait and see. Yeah. Um, but with that said, uh, I think that's all we have time for today. I yeah. want to thank James and John, as always. Thanks for joining. Um, make sure to go follow us on social media, Instagram, Twitter, at Big Red Zone. Also on TikTok, search Big Red Zone. Give <laughs> yeah. us a... We're tick, trying to become TikTok famous. We're like all the time. David's clip keeps going. David's clip's almost at. David's clip is almost matching um, Dennis's clip. Dennis's clip. Really? At like seventy yeah. k. That's pretty uh, cool. It oh, just wow. keeps gaining. We we have like four hundred something followers on yeah. TikTok. Like accidentally yeah. now. <laughs> so go follow us there. Yeah. Give us some likes on there. Comment on all our stuff anywhere. Also, if you're watching this on YouTube, make sure you hit the like button, subscribe to our channel, so you can get up updated when we are episodes come out and uh stay up to date on the big red zone if we have some clips like because i you know sometimes we release just the section so um make sure you stay up to date with that and i think that's about it so thanks for listening and have a great week everyone